All right. Microphone's in. Audio's up. Here we go. What's going on? All right. So today I'm going to document a part of my journey. And uh, this will be the first time I'm doing some uh, sort of a tandem walkthrough on a workflow, a specific workflow. I'm going to be doing a run through what we call the Venture Map. So the Venture Map, I broke down in a few additional videos. If you haven't seen those videos yet, you can check them out, breaking down the nature of the Venture Map. But basically, this is going to be day one, step one, a new idea, a new project, and um, potentially a new team. And I'm just going to walk you through step by step. Um, what that looks like, I'll go for about 15 or 20 minutes, and I'm going to start on the very first part of the board here. I'm going to play on hard mode, and basically what that looks like is having my deliverables uh, this size. Sometimes for uh, intermediate or easy mode beginners, we'll have a full deliverable per box, but we're going to, I anticipate having business architecture that populates the entirety of this board at this level um, so we're going to just start with that in mind. Uh, without further ado, let's dive off. Let's dive into it. Um, now, when I think of beginning, I'll have to say the majority of the ideas I have now are just uh, from the accumulation of many years of study, trial and error, and uh, real life working with other businesses in the wild. And I, I do genuinely believe that even before we conduct business modeling, uh, or hypothesis development, market analysis, uh, any of those sorts of things, We or even project planning, it's wise to begin in a big way with the vision, in a specific way with the purpose, with the culture, um, and then to get even more specific than that with the guiding principles. So when I think of guiding principles, I think of uh, a nucleus of a cell, and I think of the core nucleus being our purpose why we're, we're doing something. And uh, we have that represented here. Uh, there's this specific deliverable has a, a cool process associated with it that we like to run through. Um, I've already had the, the benefit of kind of getting ahead of the curve and having this particular asset uh, pre-developed. Let's see, I'll show you a old older version. This is an original asset of their guiding principles. Uh, but in essence, it leverages Simon Sinek's Start With Why philosophy. It also leverages some learnings from StoryBrand. Um, basically, we want to begin with the mission. And uh, having a mission statement is a great place to do that. Uh, that we, we believe that there's, we, we love this structure of introducing the conflict, defining the destination, and foreshadowing the stakes. We call that the uh, mission anatomy. So anyways, th this single process manual is what we used to build out the actual deliverable. Now, for most of these you know, deliverables, these basically boxes, these, these assets for the company, we have these sort of internal process manuals. We also uh, share them with our clients, help them run through those processes in uh, virtual workshops, remote workshops. Uh, you want access to these deliverables, those playbooks or a venture map template of your own to do sort of what I'm doing. Uh, happy to share that with you. We are super interested in connecting with like-minded uh, creators, builders in the world who are architecting business in new ways. So if that's you, just go ahead and hit the link below. Uh, give me a, a shout and I'll send over uh, a template on how to get started. And uh, you can even schedule a strategy session with me to implement some of these and set up your uh, brand ecosystem within Miro. All right, enough of the transactional stuff. Let's dive into it. So when I'm thinking about the very, very first thing I want to do in a project, the question is, what's the purpose? Why are we doing it? And that's the nucleus of everything else we're going to do. We have to sort of um, root a coordinate in space and in time and for everything else to, to flourish on top of because if the purpose isn't compelling enough um, it's going to get so difficult for such a long period of time that it's it's kind of uh and there's going to be so many pivots that 
even though the, the application and the iteration of our brands may shift over time, the purpose and the, the driving heart and soul of the, of the brand should more or less be grounded in, in some, some form of absolute truth um, or meaning. So uh, now it's a little esoteric and abstract, but it's something I believe that there's a general consensus on and uh, across a lot of thought leaders in, in the world, but it's something I found to be um, pretty accurate in my walk as well. So when I think of a mission statement, of course, this has an anatomy behind it. It wasn't written, um, this isn't an arbitrary paragraph, but we think at Talos Dynamics, we know that entrepreneurs are in need of a better way to clearly align and strategize with their team. In order to mitigate risks and streamline operations, we've developed the Venture Map, a framework uh, to help business leaders create a multi-dimensional model of their business that will serve as a map to visualize and optimize all systems and processes, a tool for onboarding team members, and a repository for all their intellectual property. So this is something that we've put together as the nucleus, and we view this as a 0.1 iteration, right? Something that any less fidelity than this would be an idea, a thought, a word, a spoken word, and what we believe in is the materialization of soft knowledge going from the implicit domain of abstract to the explicit domain of clarity, because that's where true alignment can take place. And when we're in a remote working environment, when we're working with our colleagues, our associates, our clients, our stakeholders through the screens, through Zoom, through Miro, through these uh, software platform and hardware platforms, it, alignment is more important than ever before. Team culture is the bedrock for that. It's the genesis for alignment, if you will. It's the originating source where alignment is um, comes out of that wellspring. And we like to begin that with a mission statement. Uh, there's many ways to define this. Um, there's many different approaches to sort of strap different uh, lexicon or jargon or colloquialisms on top of mission statement, but it basically boils down to like, why are we doing this in the most human of ways? Uh, one picture that I love to reference here, I'm just going to go into my, my cheat sheet board. This is um, where we keep a lot of our reference assets. One image that I really appreciate here is let's see this right it's it's at the core of what we're doing at the human element right if we if, let's go as far back as as our as mankind it, itself you know why are we doing this and uh, it doesn't have to be sophisticated it doesn't need to be uh, highly strategic that can come that, that that can come in time but i think answering the question why uh in a way that makes sense to you as the leader and it makes sense to the team as as uh, a group is, is healthy and meaningful uh, we like to double down with a vision statement there's a great way to picture the difference between mission statement and vision statement the way we like to kind of break it down is here i love this image from uh, good old Steve Jobs. Let's see. A vision statement is an aspirational description of what an organization would like to achieve or accomplish in the mid-term to long-term future. A vision statement is not limited to business organizations and may also be used by nonprofit or government entities. The cue here is what will the world look like after you finish changing it? We've got some reference pieces here, uh, but let's just kick it off as we've already gotten ahead of the curve. Here we go. So uh, and our first iteration on the vision is essentially to create a place for entrepreneurs to visualize and manage all of the inner workings of their business. And a streamlined integrated manner, something like that. Effectively, we could continue copywriting here, but I think our vision is to leverage data and analytics on the back end 
and connect of all of the development and traction and uh, key touch points and KPIs for a, any given organization and gamification, streamlined user interface design and, uh, and human centric uh, digital experience, if you will, and slap that together on the flat construction paper prototype that is the venture map. So we, we kind of see what we have here as a game board, as a recipe of sorts, and eventually it will come to life in a platform should it actually be validated in the world uh, with more groups, more organizations besides our own. Um, now that we have that core purpose, we kind of look at the ring around that nucleus. And effectively that's uh, the team, right? The team around the idea that's kind of the guardians of the purpose, the visionaries, the seers. Uh, we love, there's a couple different uh, sources that we've referenced to place these here. One great reference is Don Miller's uh, Mission Made Simple course. That's an excellent course if you're going to watch that. There's also a book from Strategizer called um, Testing Business Ideas where they break down the team alignment chart Let's see, I should have that here. The team alignment chart is absolutely brilliant. And yeah, it's actually produced by someone other than David J. Bland and Alex Osterwilder. Let's see, who is that? Um, bear with me. I know this gentleman's last name is quite, quite immense. Uh, well, here's the team alignment map. There we go. High impact to Stefano. Mastro Giacomo. Yeah, that's it. Great structure here on team behavior environment. Love that. We basically incepted start with why into this. Um, that was a little bit of the, the thinking. Let's see. All right. So we basically have characteristics and key skill sets. This is where we just list off the top three or four most important elements of the characteristics of our team. What are the aspirational characteristics and what skill sets do we need? Uh, so here we think that the most important elements of the core team are, is self-awareness, the ability to conduct ultra learning, uh, to think in systems and to be very self-disciplined. These are things that are very crucial for us. Um, and they're required of, of individuals that we would be bringing into our team as we scale. Uh, the skill sets of these individuals is process architecture. First and foremost, being highly adaptive and understanding the iteration cycle and the, uh, iterative approach to life and business. Um, being very highly proficient with asynchronous communication. And I, you know, I would even stretch that further, further and say... Uh, um, Asynchronous visual communication, we use Miro and Loom um, pretty frequently. So having a visual uh, collaboration and development comes asynchronously is so vital. And being initiative oriented, that kind of ties in directly with self-discipline here. And it's, it is a skill set to have initiative. It's something that we talk about a lot in Talos Dynamics. And initiative is, is a cycle. There's many sub-steps underneath of it. Uh, when I think of initiative, I pull back to the OODA loop from the military, which talks about uh, observe, orient, decide, and act. When we think of initiative as a leadership uh, trait, as a skill set, rather, um, it really requires us to uh, observe our our environment, prioritize what needs to be done amongst and within the environment, and that prioritization is only made possible when we can effectively contextualize uh, business objectives, and then we have to execute on those priorities. From there, then we close the loop with reporting and communications. So initiative is, is absolutely everything for our leaders. Uh, we kind of move out from there from the team who's around the purpose. 
to how we're doing things. So we we have our purpose, we have our core group, and we have how. We think this is the behavior, right? Our team behavior. Uh, we break this down into activities and environmental priorities. Culture uh, is kind of another way to look at that and in a different way. People will use those words. What are the activities we're doing on a regular basis? Well, consistently uh, and clearly communicating. Uh, we're reinforcing psychological safety and we establish relevant common ground or alignment. Lastly, we're demonstrating leadership. Uh, we believe that these four activities are the um, kind of first principles of uh, how we show up to work every day and what we're, what we're doing. No matter what the specific orientation of our focus and capabilities are, these uh, for, the, for the day, for the week, um, for the given project, these are the things that we're doing every single day of the week. And it's basically living our purpose and living uh, who we, our character, who we are as a group. Um, lastly, we are kind of expanding ever further outwards now, a big bang style for our, the business architecture. We'll look at environmental priorities. And we think that this one is taken directly from the Culture Code book, which is an excellent book. Let's see. There you go. If you haven't read this book, definitely recommend it. It's a great one. Great one. Leadership is vulnerable first and often. We deliver the negative stuff in person. Uh, we built this as a uh, internal uh, prioritization from us. We took the first two uh, from the culture code because we resonated with it so much. Uh, we believe in singularity of focus and uh, individual autonomy. So individual autonomy, leadership, being initiative oriented and self-disciplined, we are all kind of woven together. Individual autonomy is so important in the asynchronous environment uh, as well as self-discipline and initiative. Um, so individual autonomy is something that we really defend um, and believe in. Uh, lastly, the solution, right? We're, if we're just starting from scratch on something, we, we kind of want to put a few words to it on a board where we can, we can point to, right? We can kind of um, have more than just words, more than just thoughts um, and memories of agreement. So defining terms on what it is, this is the outer realm, right? There's a, a, book, a great book called The Way of Men. And in the, in the book, the author discusses how it's for, for many years, many centuries, uh, part of the kind of leaders, I guess I could say, his role is to define the perimeter around a given group. And that's a paraphrasing, of course. But I love this as being the perimeter for us for now. It's like we've got our heart, our vision. We've got who, we've got how we're going to show up and do this thing, and then we've got our our what. What are we doing? And this is going to be the most liquid, uh, most plastic, flexible, uh, adaptable space of the whole thing. From here, everything outward is really going to be in a, in a transient flow. It's uh, it's in the, the relative field, as my, uh, my meditating friends would like to say. Um, so we want to at least poke at what it is um, and bringing it out of the ether, out of the abstract and into a clear focus here. And that's service design, uh, it's workplace culture, it's strategic development and it's new work. This is some defining terms of, of what, it, what it is um, and then how it works. Uh, the remote workshops, live workshops, we, we call it VM sprints. This is a venture map, so VM sprinting. It's kind of a, a thing that we'll, we'll do here. I'm kind of doing a little bit of that here. Uh, we host and organize uh, IP, intellectual property, and then we do systems and process mapping. So that's kind of how it works and kind of what we're doing. Um, so yeah, that's that's the first deliverable uh, that we, we would, kind of the first yeah, chunk of collateral for a, a team, a business. Now it could literally be a note. And at the bare minimum, you could have four post-it notes with a few words in it each. It doesn't need to be as rigorously constructed. We're, we're, we just like to take a level of, of severity to everything we do because the way you do one thing is the way you do all things, I believe. So uh, moving forward from that, we'll, we'll wrap it here shortly. Let's see if I can get through the rest of this. Uh, once you kind of have deliverable 1.1, which is the guiding principles, kind of is, is a great place to start. It's like a, 
the the place for the tribe, for the team, the group, no matter how big or small, to uh, come to a, a gathering place, a rally point, and point at the wall and say, and remember on a regular basis, this is why we're here. This is uh, who we are. This is how we're going to be doing things around here. And uh, this is what it is we're doing. Um, and this is an aspirational set, but it's important because it holds accountability towards those aspirations and fuses everyone into alignment. At least it's a step in that direction. That's important. From there, we kind of go deeper into it. We say, well, who is on the team? Right? I like to refer to everyone as a leader because truly if you're waking up, breathing and putting pants on and just being alive, you have some form of responsibility as a citizen of the earth, first and foremost, if I could put on that uh, that you know hippie hat, but more than that, if we're showing up as knowledge workers, we're showing up as professionals, creatives, uh, developers, whatever the case is, even operational staff working on an hourly basis, they're, they're responsible. And responsibility and um, leadership are like two sides of the coin, right? They're, they're pretty much the same thing. Uh, one is one is uh, fancy and fun, and it makes me think of Gary Vee being slick, right? Leadership, or really just the, the kind of the cliche CEO thing that occurs these days. But then the dark side of that is responsibility. So I like to reward and recognize responsibility with that leadership uh, statement, and as it also is an encouraging factor to reinforce our cultural values. We say something like who the person is. Um, we do personality analysis through the Enneagram, uh, so we, typing system. So we just list off a little bit of that first. Um, and these are um, just general descriptions. Uh, next, we like to have some self-driven development. So we say proficiency. From our own point of view, what are we great at? And in passions, where our heart, hearts lie as individuals. And these are important because it, it allows us to sort of uh, identify our place uh, in terms of kind of like a grid coordinate on a map. And that allows for discussion, for understanding, for self-awareness, for greater alignment. And it also allows for uh, not only interweaving relations within the team, but tying in passions and proficiencies, existing skill sets with the core nucleus, with the uh, key skill sets. And it allows us to say, based on our pre-existing proficiencies from our own points of view and the skill sets that will be needed for our project, where are we um, over leveraged, where are we potentially vulnerable, and it, it allows for some risk mitigation at that point. Um, we're not going to dive too much further into this. That's all cool. We love that. This is uh, our deliverable, uh, our structure for tracking. We have an additional one here we call the team tapestry. This is the Enneagram framework that allows for personality mapping. And we like to have that. So when we're working with organizations, we like to visualize everyone on the board and conduct some kind of cultural reinforcement of, of all of that. Um, that's really going to be all I cover in this video. I'm going to peel out of here. Um, I think as we move forward, there's other great assets that you can define. Uh, like a vivid vision, for example, is more of a, a written document that is brilliant and we full heartedly support it. There's a just cause from Simon Sinek that we resonate with. And we're thinking about building a deliverable for that. So over time, we plan to flush out all of this architecture. Um, in my next video, I'm going to, let's see, these are core narrative pieces. We're going to look at the origin story our industry and our venture growth stories so are kind of aligning around the core narrative. And that'd be the second layer of depth that we have uh, in our culture. Uh, from there, that would be sufficient. That's pretty deep to, to start. I see most people start with just a few post-it notes in this space or, or uploading any mission statements they have. So that's a pretty uh, decent start, I think, for to root and to seed the venture map, so to speak, with a strong nucleus. And then from there, we'll push in the project planning and uh, I'll leverage the, the cheat sheet that we already have developed. And I'll just kind of take you through a little bit of my process. And if there's anything I missed that you do, I'd love to know about it. If you 
think of some references, some resources, a uh, perspective that could be used to enhance this process. Maybe it's a new personality typing system. Maybe it's a different way to think about uh, defining the purpose. Let me know. Leave a comment, shoot me a direct message, or uh, even schedule time to connect with me one-on-one -on, -one on a strategy session by clicking the link below in the description. That's all the time I've got for today. Thank you so much for checking this out, for joining me on the run-through. On the next video, I'll be breaking down core narrative and introducing a little more of our project planning deliverables. So until next time, see you.